It's, it's our 100th video. So we're celebrating at Epcot. Hey, ma'am, fam, can you believe it? It is our 100th video. I can't believe it. It's wild. Also, our first video is here at Epcot, so it makes sense that we'd come back for this one. Absolutely. And at the time you're seeing this, it will be the last night of Harmonious. So we are going to celebrate two things, both our 100th video and Harmonious. And we're doing it uh, in a special way. We are going to a fireworks dinner package. Now these are pretty pricey, but can be a great way to celebrate a special occasion. And this is a pretty special one. So yeah. come on, let's go. Tears will be shed. We have booked the Spice Road Table Fireworks Hold Dining on. Package. Okay. Oh, duckies. Disney ducklings. That's adorable. They're so cute. Why are they doing a conga line? They're just having little snacks. Little snicky snacks. And here's mom. I love them. It's a whole family reunion. Oh, this is truly one of the best things about being at Disney this time of year is ducklings everywhere. Okay, you were saying? Yes, I was. As I was saying, we have booked the Spice Road Table Fireworks Dining Package. It includes, as the name would suggest, dinner, as well as a seated reserved viewing area for Harmonious or whatever the new fireworks show is going to be. It's called Epcot Forever and it really has lasted forever. Um, it lasted way longer than it was supposed to and then it went away. And now it's back. So, <coughs> it's fine. It's it's fine. I actually really, really like Harmonious, and I understand that people feel a certain way about the barges, and I agree they do ruin the beautiful skyline of World Showcase Lagoon, but I love Harmonious. I mean, they're great if you want to see a spaceship land in the center of World Showcase Lagoon. I don't understand how they couldn't figure out how to make them collapsible, but that's not the point, I guess. The point is Epcot Forever will be back, and they're working on yet another all-new nighttime spectacular that is allegedly going to debut later this year. Well, whatever the new fireworks show is going to be, you can view it at the Spice Road Table Fireworks Dining Package, or there is also another option for a fireworks dining package at the Rose and Crown. The Spice Road Dining Package is $72 for adults, $31 for kids, until May 14th, where it's going up to $79 for adults, down to $29 for kids, weird, because they are adding another food item to your menu. As it stands now, each person gets two small plates, a dessert platter, and drinks. Spice Road Table is the small plates and tapas restaurant located in the Morocco Pavilion here. It is pretty easy normally to get a reservation in the main seating area. However, the fireworks dining package does go rather quickly, so you're going to want to pay attention to that if that is something you would like to have on your vacation. Again, the other restaurant that offers a dining package currently for the fireworks is Rose and Crown in the UK. The other pavilion that has lagoon side dining is Mexico. Both the quick service La Cantina de San Angel as well as La Hacienda de San Angel, one of the table service restaurants, both sit lagoon side. However, neither one offers a package. So if you want to try and sit there for fireworks viewing, you're taking a gamble of if you can get a reservation at that time. So if you intend to eat there for fireworks dining, just know that it's not guaranteed view of the fireworks and it's not a separate package with viewing reserved the way that here at Spice Road and Rose and Crown are. Taking a look at the menu for the fireworks package, each person gets to pick two of the small plates, which is the same as when they do the concert package series for the different festival concerts. We did this for the candlelight narration at Festival of the Holidays, and it actually ends up being a good amount of food. It's not super heavy, which is great because usually at Epcot you're eating a lot anyway. Uh, so they've got the classic hummus fries. They've got some meat dishes like spiced chicken, peri-peri shrimp, and a grilled lamb kefta. They've got the tiro pitakia, which I probably butchered, but it's a cheese uh, stuffed phyllo with a cucumber tomato relish. That's one of my favorite things, as well as some traditional Moroccan food like dolmas, which are great leaves stuffed with rice and herbs, as well as some naan. Then everybody's going to get the same dessert platter. You've got a kid's menu on the back here as well. Kids get to pick two from veggies and hummus, fruit, grilled chicken and pita, or grilled cheese pita. Alcohol is included, which is different than the concert packages. So they've got Mediterranean beers, wine, specialty beverages, which are a variety of mimosas, as well as non-alcoholic beverages, Coke, Diet Coke, iced mint tea, which is phenomenal. So for our little tapas dinner, we picked up the grilled lamb kefka, the tiropitakia, which I have probably butchered and I apologize, the spicy shrimp as well as the spiced chicken. 
you'll notice we chose all of the proteins because that really sounds like, for me at least, the most bang for your buck, wouldn't you say? Also got our first round of beverages. I went for the sparkling cava, which is like Spain's version of champagne. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. Nice and dry, not sweet at all. Similar to Prosecco or champagne. No complaints here at all. And for my beverage I have started with, and I am sorry for this pronunciation, I have started with uh, the Bourjons Albarino. Uh, it is from Spain and it is a white wine. I normally go with red, but when we have all this white meat like chicken and shrimp, I figured we'd go with the white wine. And I actually really like that. It's very crisp, dry on the end. It tastes a little bit like uh, Granny Smith apples and some lemon zest in there as well. Very, very good, light and refreshing. Big fan, actually. I'm also very excited to enjoy the Tiriptakia, which I can't pronounce, I'm trying my best. Um, we had this last time we were here, and it is a delightful surprise. So it's crispy phyllo dough, which is that flaky deliciousness, and then it's got a nice mild white cheese in there. What I love about it is it's topped with this very simple yet very fresh and delicious tomato and cucumber relish, and a little bit of mint. It is simple, it's delicious, I love it. First up is the spiced chicken, which includes Ras al Hanout, mint yogurt, and tabula. Uh, if I've butchered that pronunciation, my sincerest apologies, but I tried. I'm also going to try this. Ooh. Okay, yeah, there's a lot happening there, and it's all very good. Incredibly complex and deep flavors, a lot of differing textural elements. You've got the chicken, and then these grains and spices over on the side, along with. Uh, Oh my gosh, along with this leafy green and the pita on the side, this is incredibly rich, but it's still light somehow. Yeah, I would order that again. And the chicken's juicy. I think what stands out so much to me is that the chicken is marinated and so juicy. Very earthy flavors that is counteracted by the mint really well that adds a little bit of fresh brightness to it. It's difficult for me to pinpoint any particular spice in the mix. What I get on the back end is a little bit of coriander. But the mint is just so aromatic. I, I could keep eating this all night. Also trying the spicy shrimp. Now these are some delicious looking shrimpies, big shrimps. They've got chili, garlic, and a peri-peri sauce, which is a spicy African sauce that I'm a big fan of. I've not had these before, so here we go. Mm. 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 Those are awesome. I will absolutely be getting these moving forward when I come here. They definitely have a little bit of heat, not a ton though. If you're spice adverse, maybe you would think this is spicy. I don't really think it is. I love the garlicky crostini, which is a nice addition. I might ask for a few extra. Big juicy shrimp, you can tell they were grilled. Tons of flavor. Those are excellent. Those are some of the best shrimp I've ever had at Disney. Next up is the grilled lamb kefka with tzatziki, radish, and blistered cherry tomatoes, which are over here on the end. And took me a minute to recognize what they were. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut one open here. Oh, and it has the tzatziki under it. Oh. That's a big bite. So right off the bat on your first bite, you get hit with that really bright tzatziki sauce with its sort of lightness, a little bit of acidity. The cucumber breaks through. And then it takes you to the very rich lamb. It's not super gamey, which is nice, but it is very earthy. And then even as I continued to eat it, I, was, I thought to myself, it's earthy and it's super well spiced, but it's just rich without being overly fatty, which I think you run the risk of sometimes, but this is on the nose. I'm genuinely shocked and very surprised and happy. Yeah, honestly a little shocked. I'm a bigger fan of the lamb kefka over the chicken, which if you had asked me at the outset, I probably would have guessed the opposite. So I'm happy to be surprised and wrong about my first guess. We also got another round of drinks, went for the specialty mimosas this time. This one's pomegranate. I did ask for just a whisper of that pomegranate juice into the kava, just a like Jim Cummings and Illuminations on the torches, just that's how much juice I want. Ooh, and 
they delivered, perfect. Five stars for the mimosa. Just has that little whisper, that tartness of pomegranate in with the really good kava. I kind of regret not getting one of these to start with because it's a little more fun and special than just a glass of kava, but very good. And similarly, I picked up the blood orange mimosa with a unicorn's eyelash of the actual blood orange. Literally perfect. Just enough of the blood orange to remind me that it's there and not just totally champagne. Our dessert platter has arrived. Of course, they will adjust the size of this depending on how many people are at your table. But we've got a spiced almond cake right here, an almond cookie with powdered sugar, and baklava, which I'm very excited about all of these. I've had them before, and they do like low-key, really good desserts in Morocco. I don't feel like you think of Morocco for dessert, but it's delicious. That is truly a beautiful show. You liked it? It's probably my favorite fireworks show I've ever seen in Walt Disney World besides Wishes. I like it way more than Illuminations. And maybe I'll sing another tune once I go see it this week probably, but um, from when you're seeing this, uh, Happily Ever After. I just, I love it. I love the music and I'm so sad it's going away. But how do you feel about the barges? Yeah, the barges suck, and I get it, and they're ugly, and it makes World Showcase terrible, and I'm, I'm just hoping that whatever the new show is, post this interim where they're taking down the barges and Epcot Forever, I just really hope whatever the new show is captures the spirit of that, because I know there's Epcot purists who don't like that there's IP in Epcot and IP in the Nighttime Spectacular, but to me, to sing Disney music in that language is is Epcot. It's so perfectly Epcot. Also, tonight, this the final night when you're viewing it of Harmonious, I was sitting here looking around at the patrons close to us, and I saw at least three families singing in their native language when their part came on. And that uh and that feeling of being included and represented is uh is very important. Uh, for now, <clears throat> I will just listen to the soundtrack in my car. <laughs> We're gonna be like this for a while. <laughs> Epcot Forever is fine. It's it's for it's a love letter to the Epcot fans. Um, it's got you know veggie veggie fruit fruit and making memories and Soren and you know Figment and like all the Epcot songs. So if you are an Epcot fan, especially an '80s Epcot fan, you're gonna love oh, Epcot for sure. Forever. But it just does not have the spectacle that is harmonious. Okay, so all in all, I really enjoyed that experience. It's definitely a pricier meal. You could eat at a signature restaurant for less than the cost of doing the dining experience. But there is something so nice about having a reserved seat that's not crowded, that you didn't have to stake out for an hour for the fireworks show. I think it's certainly a trade-off of cost versus time commitment. So if you're willing to do that and invest the extra money, then that makes sense. What I will say is Harmonious was a very unique show in that it looked really good from some places and really just okay from other places as far as the looking at the projections and the water effects. Epcot Forever is a bit more of a everything's up in the sky that you wanna see, so it's easier to get a good spot. Who knows what the new show will be like and where the focus is, but I thought that was a pretty good view of Harmonious, which is, now irrelevant information. <laughs> <laughs> the food at Spice Road Table is underrated in my opinion. But I will say 
you're not going to walk away feeling super full. Like, I could probably eat again. Although, granted, I'm not sure if I'm the best <laughs> example to use now that I think about that. No, I do think if you went to somewhere like Rose and Crown, you would walk away fuller. But that can also be a pro, considering a lot of people like to eat a lot at Epcot, eating around the world, enjoying the festival. So it's not bad to have a lighter meal option. I absolutely think that had we spent the full day here at Epcot doing the sort of festival eats, then I would have welcomed a light bite meal. So I can see that. Ultimately, no matter where you book them, here at Epcot, Magic Kingdom, California Grill, fireworks dining packages are expensive, but they are really fun and perfect way to celebrate a special occasion like making your 100th YouTube video. Yeah. So I always enjoy them. If you'd like to see some other fireworks parties reviewed, especially now that Happily Ever After is coming back to Magic Kingdom, definitely let us know which ones you'd be interested in down in the comments. Well, friends, that is 100 Mammoth Club videos in the books. Wanted to keep this one short and sweet and celebrate with you. Thank you so much for watching these first 100 videos. We've got many more to come, but we couldn't be doing this without you. And it's kind of surreal that we've made 100 different videos. What are some of your favorites, Ben? Oh, gosh. I know. Um, Put you on the spot. You have 100 to choose from. <laughs> that's not a few at all. Uh, I'll say it's hard to not think about the first video that we filmed together which is the, which is actually a true oh, video. Animal Kingdom the Animal Kingdom video. Thing. Yeah, it's not the first video we released. That was Food and Wine, but the first video we filmed for Mammoth Club was the Animal Kingdom counting video. Yeah, that was that's, fun. I go back and watch it every once in a while, like, we learned a lot. We've learned a lot. We've learned a lot. <laughs> I really liked the Wish oh, video. Of course. Kind of stole one of mine, but all right. <laughs> Any cruise videos, really. Any <laughs> yeah. cruise videos are fun. And then I think the DCA draft mm. video was a lot of fun. That was, is it because you got to see Doctor Strange? I love math magic. <laughs> <It's> so big. <laughs> the math problem. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Yeah. Um, who, there's so many. 100, in fact. It's hard not to say Halloween Horror Nights. Um, oh, yeah, because that, that was. Uh, yeah, that was our first media invite we were brand new i didn't know if anyone would care about us and so the fact that i got to go to universal as mammoth club and represent us at this really awesome event i'm always hold a soft spot for that one yeah. um the d100 video that we shot in disneyland <laughs> i think that is like quintessential mammoth club it was a really fun way to showcase 100 years of disney with history and fun facts and snacks and just having fun as a trio. Yeah, really up all our alleys yeah. there. Uh, the Secrets videos are a passion project of mine. I've loved filming every single one of those. Uh, the same thing with the Women's History Month video. That was oh. something I really enjoyed yeah. researching and, and doing, and I hope to do many more similar to that as the year goes on. I, I could probably list all the videos. I, say, I mean, all, I, I can't say they're all your favorites. <laughs> I love doing the festival videos. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I love doing the special events, uh -huh. but... I just love doing this, and I love doing it for Mammoth, so. And don't worry, we did text Max, and we were able to get his favorites as well, uh, of which I think the draft series was something yeah, he, he really... Yeah, Disneyland draft. Yeah, absolutely. Probably because of Mr. Toad. 100% because of Mr. Toad. Or the canoes. Everyone loves canoes. God, I love the canoes. <laughs> Max also said the credit card roulette game, which we played at Disney Springs, was one of his favorites, which I have to agree with that as well. I also got to say Winter Picks Dinner has been a favorite of mine. That's a lot of fun. I like I like that. Rock, paper, scissors is a good game. I'm not great at it, but I do like the fun and the competitiveness of that. Really a good way to put a twist on eating, I think. I agree. So thank you again for following us through 100 videos. Yeah. Thank you for following us here at Walt Disney World, at Universal Orlando, across the country at Universal Hollywood. We got to open Super Nintendo World with That's Mammoth Club. That's crazy. We've been to Disneyland, and I've loved going on new adventures as well. We've been to New York City. We've been to Texas for the Yule Ball. We have been, I've went to the woods in Virginia for the Forbidden Forest. I say, until you hit the Forbidden Forest, that was like, it was, it was super creepy. Wonderful, but <laughs> a little creepy. But it's just been so much fun covering the things we know and love and new things that we're excited to explore and share with you. So truly, from all three of us, thank you, thank you, thank you for believing in us, for following us, and to hundreds more. We're going to keep trying new things, opening new doors, all that all right, fun well. stuff. <laughs> hey, you said it right. Folks, be sure to like and subscribe if you're new and follow us on all of our socials. And please come and join us on Discord if you want to talk with us directly. We have a growing and thriving community there. 
and we'd be so happy to have you. And in the meantime, thank you so much. Let us know what your favorite video has been so far. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. Thank you.